Good evening. I'm totally confused about what I have to read. It's the first time it's happened to me in 115 days. I've been going over the Bible and I'm more confused now than when I started because the instructions that I typed up and I looked at the original said that I have to read Ephesians 1, 1 to 3. Then it's like dots in between and 24 the numbering doesn't make sense none of it makes sense so I'm going to do something completely different I'm going to read all of it because I don't know what parts you're supposed to hear because it's going to be like it for two days and then it goes to judges I can't work out their numbering because it doesn't match my bible the page numbers the numbers and my, my brain is tired and I'm saying, I may as well just read. I'll just read, rather try to work out what few lines I have to read, or if it's all, because it's not transparent. It's just not clear and it doesn't add up. It doesn't make sense. So I'm instead of doing, as it said, Ephesians 1, and 1 to 3 it said, and 24, no explanation, yet there isn't a 24, not on there, further on there is. There's it, 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 None of it is, is making sense to me. So I'm going to read 1, 2 and 3 Ephesians. <laughs> that way you'll, you'll find out later because I, I don't know. I got this sheet in, in London from the Dominicans in Haverstock Hill. Not last year, the year before. And my priest is too far away to show him how confused I am. So I'm just going to read because otherwise I'm, I am get my brain even more confused than it already is. So basically we're on the Bible in one year, day 115. So we've got a long way to go. So if you hear a lot more than you should, that's my fault because I can't work out the few lines that you're supposed to hear. But uh, be rest assured that we'll be going to Judges very soon, two days' time. So maybe they only wanted a few words from Ephesians, but I'm afraid you're going to get a lot more than you expected. <laughs> maybe you know what you should be receiving, but I I certainly don't. It's, it's, it's too much for me at my age to work out what they mean because it isn't clear. It's just not clear. So pray for me not to be so stupid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom his love commits me here, ever this day be at my night, be at my side, to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend me in this day of battle. Be my safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, I humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust down to hell Satan and all the wicked evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. The letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, of reading from Ephesians 1, 2 and 3. That's the only way I can deal with it because I have no idea what you're supposed to be hearing. But I'll give you the titles. Salutation. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are also faithful in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. The title, Spiritual Blessings in Christ. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Verse 4. Even as he chose us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. 
verse 5. He destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace which he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us. For he has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth, in him according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to the counsel of his will. We who first hoped in Christ have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. In him you also who have heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation and have believed in him was sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. The title, Paul's Prayer, then from verse 15, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power in us who believe, according to the working of his great might, which he accomplished in Christ when he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church. Verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. And it said that Ephesians 1, 1 to 3, and then verse 24. And so you get here, the last verse was 23 note. So now it begins chapter 2 of Ephesians, from death to life. That's got me because there was no verse 24. So I didn't know if I was going to be jumping around with just a few lines. So I thought... I'll just have to read the whole. Then we can digress later. A reading from Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. From death to life. And you he made alive when you were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world 
following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience. Among these, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of body and mind, and so we were, by nature, children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, and in brackets, by grace you have been saved, and raised us, us up with him, and made us sit with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. Not because of his works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We now another heading, one in Christ, followed by verse 11 going on. Therefore, remember, at one time you Gentiles, in the flesh, called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Verse 12. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise having no hope and without God in the world. Verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once were far off have been brought near in the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made us both one and has broken down the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing in his flesh the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby bringing the hostility to an end. Verse 17, And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit, to the Father. Verse 19. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Verse 20. Built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. Verse 22, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The word of the Lord. 
and because I'm still confused, but as some of the words that came out of that reading struck a bell with what we've been reading in the Old Testament and what we're going to go back to when we start reading Judges. So there is a link if you're a theologian, but not if you're me, just a reader. It may be because I'm tired, but I'm not tired enough to say that I... I'm I'm not I'm I'm happy reading even though I'm tired. It's just that the brain is slowing down ready a bit because it's night time, you know. But I will read chapter three of Ephesians now because somehow or other there's something in there that's linked to link back to the Old Testament, which we're doing the whole of the Bible through these readings, but they haven't made it transparent for someone like me. Maybe themselves, because they're so clever. So a reading from Ephesians chapter 3. And the title of this is, and we're the Gentiles. Paul's ministry to the Gentiles. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, on behalf of you Gentiles, Assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly, verse 4, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Verse 6, that is how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Verse 7. Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace which was given to me by the working of his power. To me though I am the very least of all the saints. This grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9, and to make all men see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. Verse 11. This was according to the eternal purpose which he has realised in Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 12 in whom we have boldness and confidence of access through our faith in him. Verse 13, So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. The next title is the prayer for the readers, verse 14 onwards. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith 
that you being rooted and grounded in love may have power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Verse 20 Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Verse 21 To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever Amen. The word of the Lord. So it ends there. There was no verse 24, which was in the write-up thing that I follow to do the Bible in one year. It's a whole sheet which I'm typed up to so many, and then I'll continue and then follow it. But even my typed up version, I don't I didn't check it, but it's identical, but it still is I found the whole thing confusing. So I'm going to then go on to read the psalm now. I have finished and completed the Ephesians and I've done more than what was written down. But I'll sort it out as I go along. So I'll just put this in here and go back and find. I have to now read to you for day 115. The Psalm 115, so it will be marked out further back. Oh well, we'll get there in the end. So, 115. A reading from Psalm. 115, there should be some connection, but I won't be able to work it out for you. But this is definitely what we have to read now following the Ephesians. So, the impotence of idols and the greatness of God. Maybe you listeners will get the plot, but I've lost the plot. So, I don't, I just know that I just have to read it. But, um, where the links are, it's uh, beyond me. So we're now reading Psalm 115. The impotence of idols and the greatness of God. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to thy name give glory. For the sake of thy steadfast love and thy faithfulness, why should the nations say, where is their God? Our God is in the heavens. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold. The work of men's hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. Eyes, but do not see. They have ears, but do not hear. Noses, but do not smell. They have hands, but do not feel. Feet, but do not walk. And they do not make a sound in their throat. Those who make them are like them. So are all who trust in them. O Israel, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, put your trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You who fear the Lord, 
trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The heavens are the Lord's heavens, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor do any that go down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth and for evermore. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that bit wasn't difficult. So it's only that Ephesians business and we have it to put up with tomorrow as well. So now I need to go to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 29 to 54. 29 to 54. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The title. Reading from chapter 11, Luke. And the heading is the sign of Jonah, verse 29. When the crowds were increasing, he began to say, this generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign shall be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For as Jonah became a sign to the men of Nineveh, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. The Queen of the South will arise at the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will arise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, something greater than Jonah is here. The light of the body is the next heading. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a bushel, but on a stand that those who enter may see the light. Your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eye is sound, your whole body is full of light. But when it is not sound, your body is full of darkness. Therefore, be careful, lest the light in you be darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, it will be wholly bright, as when a lamp 
with its rays gives you light. The next title, Jesus denounces Pharisees and lawyers. While he was speaking, a Pharisee asked him to dine with him. So he went in and sat at table. The Pharisee was astonished to see that he did not first wash before dinner. And the Lord said to him, Now you Pharisees cleanse the outside of the cup and of the dish, but inside you are full of extortion and wickedness. You fools! Did not he who made the outside make the inside also? But give for alms those things which are within, and behold, everything is clean for you. But woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe many and ruin every herb and neglect justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Woe to you, Pharisees, for you love the best seat in the synagogues and salutations in the marketplaces. Woe to you, for you are like graves which are not seen and men walk over them without knowing it. One of the lawyers answered him, Teacher, in saying this, you reproach us also. And he said, Woe to you lawyers also, for you load men with burdens hard to bear, and you yourselves do not touch the burdens with one of your fingers. Woe to you, for you build the tombs of the prophets whom your fathers killed. So you are witnesses and consent to the deeds of your fathers, for they kill them and you build their tombs. Therefore also the wisdom of God said, I will send them prophets and apostles, some of whom they will kill and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation from the blood of Abel to the blood of Zechariah, who perished between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, I tell you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe to you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. You did not enter yourselves, and you hindered those who were entering. As he went away, from there, the scribes and the Pharisees began to press him hard and to provoke him to speak of many things, lying in wait for him to catch at something he might say. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. I'm sorry that it's complicated, but I can't work it out. I can't work out what I should have read, but I have decided to read it all to stop my brain being confused. So I might find tomorrow on day 116, or maybe I'll do it in a minute and get it out of the way and get out of Ephesians by the next reading after that. So I'll be in Judges then because this, this business with Ephesians in the middle of a reading, like so far, we've only been reading the Old Testament. And all of a sudden, in the middle of reading the Old Testament, we're sent to Ephesians to read something there, which I never understood why or what. I can't work out those things. So then we'll be fully back in and doing judges, and then probably proceeding, and maybe occasionally they'll send us up to the New Testament again, but to link it. But I'll ask a priest one day, because it's confused my 
my small way of thinking. So God bless you. Thank you so much for listening. May you have a peaceful night. And I'm sending you God's peace in abundance and healing and prayers. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. God bless you all and protect you from the evil one and evil people. <laughs>